Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Beginner's Mind series. I once read this quote by the author of the book called The Growth Mindset, Professor Carol Dweck, and she said, you're in charge of your mind. You are in charge of your mind. I know some people are going to disagree with that. <laughs> you're in charge of your mind. You can help it grow by using it in the right way. Well, our special guest today, Mr. Simon Haig, aka the growth strategist, helps you do just that. You know, use your mind in the right ways to grow yourself, to grow your businesses. He's a highly acclaimed business leadership and personal growth strategist and a transformational thought leader. He's globally acknowledged um, expert in negotiation and deal making as well. Also a certified leadership executive and life coach and adjunct lecturer, keynote speaker, media host, a lawyer and a five stars Amazon author. Today's conversation is going to center around how you can tap into your strengths, how you can align with your higher and authentic self and how you can grow in the process. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Simon Haig. Simon, you're welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Great to be here. And uh, and thanks for that long introduction. Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I kind of boil it down into the fact that what I do is help individuals achieve their authentic potential while mm -hmm. at the same time helping the organization they're in achieve its intended purpose because right. for me individual potential and organizational purpose should be matched you know absolutely so that, really, mm -hmm. that really is the core of it and and growth is the core of everything right it, it's the it's the lifeblood of organizations and uh -huh. obviously if we're, if we're not growing as humans intellectually yeah. and spiritually and mentally then we're right. effectively going backwards so that that's that's the essence no i love that and i agree completely with what you said that the individual is not a separate the organization is not a separate entity than the individual they they they're interlinked at the end of the day i know uh, company law talks about you know the company being a separate entity right but it's the human beings it's the people it's you and me it's the ones who are tuning into this conversation we are the ones who yeah. make up the culture and we are the drivers of growth um, I'd like to begin, Simon, I'd like to jump straight into it and, and begin um, with asking you about you, the scope of your work as a growth strategist. I've called myself a growth catalyst at times. So this is going to be an interesting conversation, a growth catalyst and a growth strategist together. Uh, guys, get your pens and paper ready to take down loads of notes. As I always encourage my audience, Simon, is to distill it into simple, actionable steps that you can take as soon as you finish listening to us. Maybe there's, you know, out of the entire 30 minutes that we're together, you're going to get step one, step two, step three. So make sure you're ready to take those notes. Tell us about your work as a growth strategist with individuals and companies. What does that involve? What sort of challenges do you usually solve for people? And what can we learn from that in the process? Okay, well, thanks, Simajit. So, so basically what I do is if you can imagine four pieces of jigsaw interlocking uh -huh. together, and there's four aspects of growth, both mm -hmm. for organizations and for individuals. They're the same four aspects. Sure. And they are mindset or right. personal growth that's the uh -huh. first thing the second thing then is leadership growth the okay. second thing then is business growth and the fourth mm -hmm. thing is brand growth right mm -hmm. so these are individual and organizational and they overlap and so okay. what i do, what i do is i help mm -hmm. let's take the individual because we're talking about individuals here and individuals make up companies so yeah. what i'm what I what I really do is get to the core of the frequency, the frequency of the individual. So mm -hmm. what is when I mean the frequency, what is the the mindset of the individual? What is their why? Um, how how aware are how self aware are they? What drives mm -hmm. them? What's their motivation? How sure. resilient are they? Because right. before you, unless you look at those core mindset attributes, how can you possibly get a sense of your leadership and mm -hmm. your business and brand capabilities? So that's the first thing. Then I look at the leadership capabilities. So having looked at the mindset right. um, and having got a sense of who you are, then right. I look at things like how do you communicate? How do you connect? How assertive are you? How influential are you? Mm -hmm. And then once we look at leadership, we look at business. So. Mm -hmm. Given that we get a sense of who we are and our leadership capabilities, how can we grow a company? How do we chase the right opportunities? How mm -hmm. do we market the company? And then finally, we move into brand growth. So given, given that we've looked at ourselves, looked at our leadership, looked at our business, can we then yeah. truly give, a, give a, a, a resonance to the brand and also our personal brand? So sure. in effect, those four elements, mindset, leadership, business, and brand build on each other. And, uh -huh. and all the time, I'm looking for the frequency of the right. individual 
so, so, so at the end of the journey, their brand is truly aligned with who they are, right. their leadership capabilities, and their business strength, if that makes sense. It absolutely does. And I love the fact that it all begins with the mindset, that the, the your first step in the process is the mindset, and then comes the, so it's about self-leadership, right? Yeah. I was speaking to Andrew Bryant the other day. He's an expert on that subject. And so it's about leading yourself and how, what Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher said, uh, said, when you set your mind right, everything else falls into place. And then it's your leadership, it's your impact on other people. I love that. And the third level was your business. And the fourth you mentioned was the brand. So in effect, the brand, the way the world perceives me, me or perceives my work begins with my mindset. I absolutely love that. So yeah. which is going to bring me to my next very important question, Simon, you're an expert on the subject, you've coached thousands of individuals worldwide, help them overcome, uh, you know, these challenges at various at all the four levels that you've spoken about. Uh, what are the common mindset limitations that you frequently come across? And, um, you know, in your experience, and what can people who are tuning into this conversation start today in order to ensure that they have some kind of an insurance policy against those frequent mindset traps, if you will? Yeah. So, you know, in terms of some of the traps, I guess the, the way to start here is that my great, my great friend and my mentor, mm -hmm. Marshall Goldsmith, the world's number one leadership thinker, mm -hmm. said, said to me a couple of years ago, Simon, you need to match your confidence with your capability. Because wow. at the time, I, I felt that I was missing, missing something. Uh -huh. And so, and that's the core of the work that I do is I work on people's confidence. I think so many people have more capability than they realize. But, right. but, but, they, but for whatever reasons, going back to childhood uh, and, and whatever reasons, you know, we lose that confidence. We have a yeah. set, set of, you know, set of imposter syndrome issues. Yeah. And, and I, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that human beings, unlike most other animals, we're inherently lazy, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we <laughs> tend to do things, we tend to leave things to the last minute. So right. we tend to do things and the pain of not doing it exceeds yeah. the pain of doing it, you know? So right. I don't know about you, I, I cram for exams at the last minute, okay? And so <laughs> that's it, me it, too. <laughs> that's a large part of the Indian subcontinent, you know, that's how the examination system works here. I was joking with an education expert the other day, I said more learning happens in the couple of uh, weeks before the examination than the entire academic year combined together. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go and, on. And, yeah. you know, and I think, I think the reason for this is that we live in our comfort zone. It's very mm -hmm. easy for us to live in our comfort zone. We yeah. feel safe and we feel in control. But in fact, we're not really in control. We're just right. limiting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So so, so that, that, that there really are, you know, the big, the, the biggest reasons for that, that are holding people back. And so the work that I do is help ease people in a very simple way, but a very uh -huh. effective way to allow them to intertwine their true identity mm -hmm. with their brand and allow that frequency to shine. Okay. And so sure. that's moving, moving from so I help people move from the comfort zone into the fear zone. So the comfort zone, you feel safe and in control. Then right. in the fear zone, you lack a bit of self-confidence. You're looking to find excuses, but you need to go through that to grow. Absolutely. And this is all about the growth. This is the growth mindset journey. And then from mm -hmm. the fear zone to the learning zone, where right. you start acquiring new skills, you surprise yourself, Simajit, that you, mm -hmm. wow, I, I managed to do that. I managed to extend myself. And, and then finally into the growth zone, where mm -hmm. you find a purpose, you find a passion, you're starting to live your dreams. And that circle goes round and round and round. And, and, and my good friend, uh, Dave Ulrich, the father of modern HR, mm -hmm. says, mm -hmm. this, is not, this is not a circle of growth. It's a spiral of growth. So right. you're constantly, constantly growing as you go upwards, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Absolutely. I love it. It's not, you're not in the same place. You're not moving in the same place. It's a spiral. You're going upwards. And um, I love what you said about matching your confidence with your competence, right? Uh, confidence with your capability. But capability. Competence is yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. So c capability. And um, I've also seen, when you talk about the imposter syndrome, I've seen that um, 
people who actually know more be- begin to doubt themselves more in the process. That once you, once you perhaps have, have had more exposure, you've read more, you've seen more, you begin to question things. And in the process, you may come across as someone who's unsure vis-a-vis versus somebody who probably does not have that kind of depth or uh, depth to their learning, but then they appear more confident and, and is going to have an impact in the, in the short run, you know, between these two people here. Your thoughts on that? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, as I said, this is an iterative process, you know, we're, we're all constantly learning. And what, one of the things, one of the things that I do to everybody at all mm-hmm. stages, and I recommend they ask themselves three questions. And I, and I, 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 I try and do this myself. The first question is, uh-huh. Project forward. So if you and I, Simajit, were having this conversation on the 24th of March, 2025, in three years' time, right. if we're having this discussion in three years' time and you were looking back to today, what has had to have happened in your life, both personally and professionally, for you to feel that you've made progress? So that kind of pushes people into mm-hmm. that their future version of them and allows them to then to, to, to map their own journey because a growth journey is an intentional journey, and we Indeed. all have to be on this. We all have Indeed. to be on this. We mm-hmm. all have to stretch. The second question is, what are the three biggest dangers within me? Within mm-hmm. me, it doesn't matter how far I've progressed up the leadership scale, all of us have frailties. All of us have concerns. All of us have anxieties. We're all human beings. So what yep. are the three biggest dangers, whether it's self-imposed limitation, whether it's saying yes too many times that need mm-hmm. to be eliminated? And the third question I ask is, what are the three biggest opportunities and strengths within me that I should really focus on. And I just want to stop on strengths. Most people don't realize what strengths they have. And so right. I do a lot of work when I coach people, I ask them to look at, and there are six main types of strengths that all humans have mm-hmm. to varying degrees. And they're wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence. But most of us, I don't know about you, but my school teachers never told me what my strengths were. Mm-hmm. My friends don't, my employers. So it's important that we all, at every stage in our journey, focus on strengths, opportunities, fears, and our future self. I love that. And also the fact that we were not um, taught this stuff back in school. We were, no. there, there was not even a conversation around this. The no. entire education no. system sadly focuses 100%. And even if the parents join us in as well in the process on focusing on what's missing, what's the weak point here. Um, I uh, often I joke with my or- audiences when I do the parenting workshops, your kid comes back home with the report card, five subjects altogether, three he's excelling, one is doing average on the one he just passed. Where is the conversation going to be focused on? And immediately all hands go up. It's going to be focused on the fifth subject, where he barely passed. And what happened here, right? So it's, we are attuned to yeah. weaknesses, right? Yeah, and it's interesting you say that because I posted on LinkedIn about eight months ago uh-huh. um, a, a post about why people give up. And there are, mm. there, there are many reasons, but people give up because, you know, we fear the failure, we resist change, we're mm-hmm. worried about success. Um, we feel the world owes us something. We dwell on our mistakes. Yep. We, we believe our own weaknesses, okay? And most of this is in our head, and most of it is artificial. I right. posted that on LinkedIn, and I had about 150,000 views. So people were very interested. And mm-hmm. then somebody said, why don't you post why people succeed? And mm-hmm. I did, and very few, very few people were interested. <laughs> so so I, I ask people now what in my coaching consulting, why are humans so obsessed with why people fail and the fail. reason is it's a mirror on ourselves uh-huh. we kind of feel we kind of feel relieved when we see right. other people fail. there's other people and, right mm-hmm. yeah and so but we still need to get through that and we need to and how do we get through this we need to accept ourselves we mm-hmm. need to accept ourselves as who we are for what we are for who mm-hmm. we are rather than what we do I we also need to point. accept that that, that um, we need to accept that life is as it is, not how we wish it to be. You know, we mm-hmm. can't control life. We can only control our reactions to life. And, and we're, all in, we're all in the same boat. So mm-hmm. take pressure off yourself and allow you to focus on you and your capabilities the dying, the dying. and realize that we all fail. We all make mistakes, but that's part Our of that growth journey. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well said. And I completely agree with that. There is an obsession with uh, figuring out what could go wrong. And perhaps that is why a lot of people are stuck. The reason they are. I'm reminded of a quote by Rumi who said, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside the tangle of fear based thinking. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? 
move outside yeah. the tangle of fear-based thinking, Rumi. Uh, Simon, yeah. I'd love to um, now direct our conversation towards the subject of fears that p- hold people back. And in your opinion, if, if um, and that's all of us in a way, you know, and we've all been through that. What would your top three recommendations be to somebody who's who wants to have experience a major breakthrough in their life, but is afraid is sitting on the fence? What would you, what, what, what are the three factors you feel can play a significant role in helping them take the first step? I think the first factor is getting honest with yourself. And, mm-hmm. and, and, I, and, and I direct your audience to a, 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 the, the best book I've ever written, and it's called Into the Magic Shop by an American neurosurgeon called James Doty, D-O-T-Y, Into the Magic Shop, uh, a fantastic book, and he gives a four-step process for how people can can live a fulfilling growth-based life. And the first two are easy. You need Uh to find ways to relax your body, calm your mind. The fourth one most people do, and that's set your goals and your intent. 95% of people don't do the third thing. And that is you have to get honest with yourself. You Mm -hmm. really need to focus on who you are, what you want to do. Uh, And that brings me on to the second point, which is alignment, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a a second book I want to recommend, a great book called Aligned by Hortense Le Gentil. She is a phenomenal French-American management uh, guru. And she says, when you're aligned, you instinctively know what to do and you know deep down you're on the right path Mm -hmm. and everything is possible. And mm-hmm. my spin on that is to truly excel personally, professionally, we need to really get to grips with who we are, what mm-hmm. motivates us, why we feel things. So you have to, this is why mm-hmm. I, I start with the mindset. You really sure. need to, and then you need to match your, and that allows you then to match your confidence with your capability better. If you don't really look at yourself honestly, how can you honestly get truthful and how right. can you honestly become confident in making decisions? And, and I guess I'll finish on this. Uh-huh. Confidence in making decisions is so important, uh, and and as I said, you know, because you need to get a much better sense as what as to what you cannot change and focus on the things you can change. Right. That's the key. That's the key. Mm-hmm. So alignment, I think, is critically important, um, mm-hmm. and and getting honest with yourself. Uh, and then I think the third thing is you've got to do this. You've actually got mm-hmm. to you you know gr- grittiness. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Duckworth, who wrote the book on grit, yep. says there are. Four aspects of grit. A, a uh-huh. gritty person has to have an interest and a passion. They right. need to practice every day. They right. need to understand their purpose, and they have to have hope. And I, wow. I'll finish on this, Simajit. I mm-hmm. think the key element for everything we've discussed is hope. If somebody has hope, they'll grow. Yeah. Hope is so, so important. I think neuroscience and psychology hasn't looked at the power of hope enough, but I think hope is the key underpinning of sustainable growth in people. I love that. The fact that, the, it, and we often overlook this. We often overlook the alignment part. We take care of other things. We take care of our phys- physical fitness and grooming and so on and so forth. But we forget this simple, powerful thing. What you spoke about was the alignment with your higher self, who you are, who do you want to be? Uh, what yeah. are the things you need, need to start changing today in order to get there? I know we're short of time here, Simon. I really appreciate you um, taking out the time from your busy schedule, having this conversation with us. Before we let you go, um, um, one last question, which is to people out there who are feeling stuck, and this is a frequent comment on all of our videos, I'm feeling stuck right now. I often joke about it. I said the planet's whizzing around thousands of miles per second on its axis. How could you be stuck in, <laughs> in such a scenario? But there are people who feel they are stuck, they are suffocated. Uh, we are um, living in an era where the youth suicide rates, especially in the Indian subcontinent, are the highest in the world. Young people willing to take their lives because things are not working the way they want them to what would your message be to people who feel who are feeling stuck um, at the moment in in their circumstances you know i i would you know i i've been through that my that journey myself 12 years uh-huh. ago i was in a very difficult place and 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 grabbing on to somebody you trust somebody who can give you that grain of hope right sure uh, is critically critically important so you need to find somebody you trust and then i i, I quote albert einstein he says if you he said if you always do what you always did you will always get what you always want. It's God, right. what you, what you, what you, so, so what you always got. So I think you have to, you, you have to, at the end of the day, Simajit, nobody is, is going to save any of us. Nobody mm-hmm. is going to manage our lives. There comes mm-hmm. a point where we have to accept ourselves. We have to be comfortable with who we are unconditionally uh, right. and, and, and accept the fact that 
you know, you are the best version of you out of 8 billion people in the world. There's mm -hmm. no better version of each of us in the world, right? Yes, there are people who are smarter, better looking, faster, but there are attributes. Except that we as a whole are the best and focus mm -hmm. on that and build on that and, and use the, ra the, the, the ladders of hope to, to pull yourself forward and also to realize that everybody feels these frailties. Everybody right. you mm -hmm. know, con is concerned about lack of, lack of opportunities and everybody worries about strength. So take yourself out of yourself and work with others. Actually help mm -hmm. others take right. you away from you. So I think that's really, really important. The service mindset. Thank you so much. <clears throat> You've been able to pack in so much practical insights in the short 20 minutes that we had together. I think uh, for everyone who's tuning in, you need to watch it over and over again to, to pick out the nuggets because, you, you know, your references to other authors and, you know, these steps. And it was full of information. It was not just your opinions, just simply from that perspective, but also hardcore, you know, uh, process mapping of what people can do. One, two, three and four. I really appreciate you freely sharing your wisdom and your time, Simon. Thank you once again. You're welcome. It was a great honor. Thanks so much. Thank you. Likewise. Keep in touch, please. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Mr. Simon Haig from Ireland, also known as the Growth Strategist. And um, we had a wonderful discussion there uh, on growth, uh, on individual growth. I love his uh, format, the four-step process, which starts with the mindset. It moves on to your leadership, then goes on to your business, and then goes on to your brand. Loved it. It all made sense, and especially the fact that it's starting with the mindset. Everything begins with the mindset. Um, I had a couple of messages uh, on that, on the subject of growth that I wanted to share with you. One is a poem by Jesse B. Rittenhouse. Um, it's, it's called, um, it's, it's about asking more from your life. And she wrote, I bargained with life for a penny. I bargained with life for a penny and life would pay no more. However, I begged that evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is just an employer. For life is just an employer. She gives you what you ask. But once you've set the wages, why you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire. I worked for a menial's hire only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have willingly paid. I worked for a menial's hire only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have willingly paid. Jesse B. Rittenhouse. And I think that's a powerful reminder. Ask more from your life. This does not mean you live in a constant state of anxiety and lack, but it also means that um, you do what you're supposed to do here on your earthly journey, which is to explore the edges of your potential and to stretch them constantly, uh, not only just for material gain for yourself, but also in service to other people, because that's when you're going to experience um, the most uh, joy on your uh, on your journey here is when you is stretch your potential, when you stretch your capacity to do something, um, to achieve something and to serve other people in the process. I had some specific pointers on the subject of growth, which you might be familiar with already if you've tuned into my other videos. These are things I frequently talk about on the subject of self-growth and self-transformation. Uh, however, in the context of this current discussion, it's very important that I share them with you once again. I invite you to share your top takeaways in the comments uh, section below. Uh, I love the fact how there is, the, you know, these conversations go back and forth in the comments and people are helping each other. But I would really love to hear what your top three takeaways are from my conversation with Mr. Simon Haig today. So here are a couple of pointers for self-growth. Um, from my side, from my perspective as well. Number one, embrace the three C's. The three C's, which I've talked about in almost every keynote, change, challenges, competition. These are the three things we run away from the most. And these are the three C's which help us actually step outside our comfort zone and make something out of our lives. Welcome change, challenges, and competition. Don't run away from them. Change, challenges, and competition. These are the factors that enable you to grow. Do this little exercise with me. Take a deep breath in and reflect on the time in which you feel that you uh, experienced the maximum, the largest uh, period of growth in your life, where, where you experienced significant growth in all aspects, in your skills, in who you are as an individual. And uh, chances are it has something to do with your periods of struggle. It has something to do when you or going through a massive change 
it has something to do when you were facing a lot of external or internal competition, right? So change, challenges, competition. Number two, question self-limiting beliefs. As soon as you set high goals, as, as soon as you go about the journey of self-transformation, something is going to get activated deep within. The resistant barriers are going to come up and these barriers are your SLBs, self-limiting beliefs. You need to sit down and question and overcome each one of these one by one in order to complete your journey of transformation. Number three, check. Um, um, it's very important, it's vital that you check how you see yourself, right? Self-image. People can never perform beyond their self-image, right? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in a positive light? You cannot exceed your self-image. So it's important to check how do you see yourself. And if that is being a barrier in your growth, it's important to redefine it. It is important to look at yourself in from a vantage point of appreciation and love and honoring your struggle so that you're able to change how you see yourself. And once you see your, once you change how you see yourself, everything is going to change, right? This is the root cause of the lack of self-esteem, people who have a poor self-image. Number four, the power of initiative, okay? Um, very important in the process of growth. Things will not be served to you on a platter. Opportunities will, well, that's how the phrase goes. Opportunities come knocking on your door. Opportunities usually are not going to come knocking onto your door. You, you're you going to have to walk out, you know, walk and you meet halfway. It's like this love affair that happens <laughs> somewhere in the middle. So take initiative, step outside your comfort zone, take a chance, make yourselves vulnerable. It's fine. You'll fail. You'll embarrass yourself. You'll make mistakes, but that's okay. As long as you keep moving forward and taking initiative. And the fifth one is um, the power of the small steps step forward. Believe in the power of the one small step forward. A lot of people are not able to uh, ever undertake their growth and transformation uh, journeys, whether it's entrepreneurial or individual or spiritual, is because they want to see all the way towards the end. And that's an impractical demand. All you need to believe in is the next one step and the next one step after that and the next step after that. That's how you move towards growth. That's how you create a brand new you. Thank you once again for tuning in into our conversation today with Mr. Simon Haig. And uh, hashtag beginner's mind is your way of looking up all the previous wonderful conversation that, that we've had. You will find that hashtag somewhere in the description of this video, even in the title. Just click on that and what you will see. Voila, all the previous conversations will also show up. As always, you have the option of watching these on YouTube if you're at home or if you're you know watching these on your mobile phone um, else you can uh, download on podcasts and uh, watch it while you're on the move or while you're exercising thank you once again i'll see you again soon take care bye bye now